Hi friends. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode at Christ Based Healing. Um, if you are new to my channel, this is my third video and the purpose of this channel is just to share um, physical, mental, and spiritual content for biblical Christians, as well as um, just to help share the blessed hope of salvation through Jesus Christ for those people who are searching for truth. So I hope you enjoy my channel. Um, uh, just to preface by saying that I am not a theologian or a pastor or a teacher or a preacher. Um, I am a a born again Christian, a new born again Christian, so I'm a baby in Christ. Um, I just wanted to help, um, just help edify the body of Christ to be uh, somebody that you can listen to to know that you're not alone. And um, I think oftentimes, for me, anyways, a lot of the people that I found and been listening to um, seem to have been Christians their whole life or at least grew up in a Christian household. That's not me. I grew up in a secular um, atheistic home. And so I, I came to Christ on my own. It's been a very long journey. <laughs> and um, so, I mean, I'll probably be speaking about things like um, false prophets, fake Christians, um, the what being born again really means, the differences of, of living a life um, before God found me and saved me and then what it's like to live now um, having the Holy Spirit in me and walking with God and so it, it is a journey um, I'm not perfect I make mistakes and I'm a human and so I will always um, really encourage you to go back to the source which is the Bible this is God's Word and so if you're ever wondering what it is that God wants to say to you or what it is that he wants um, you to act like or be like, uh, this <laughs> is the, your key, not me um, and, and really nobody else. So just make sure that you're always filtering through what you're hearing outside in the world through God's work because um, that's important if we want truth. So today, I um, actually wanted to talk to you guys about what is the gospel. Um, I'm going to link um, a bunch of different videos um, from people that I've learned um, from that I think are really credible sources that I, from listening to them, do believe that they are biblical Christians. And again, while none of them are perfect, and I think that um, we all make mistakes as Christians, as and as humans, that these are these people mean well, that their hearts are in the right places, and that perhaps certain areas that they might get wrong is just because they haven't been sanctified in those areas yet. And I'm the same. So uh, I'm not a guru. I'm I'm not here to save you. The only salvation and saving comes from Jesus Christ, and that comes from repentance and faith in Christ, which we'll talk about today and what that means, okay? So let's first just talk about what um, gospel means. Um, what was new to me, I didn't realize um, that the Greek word for gospel um, in English means good news. So the gospel is the good news of Jesus Christ and what he did for us here on earth. The interesting thing though is um, it's often not viewed as good news for a lot of people because I don't think they really understand that they need a savior. Um, and that was true for me in, in my beginning journey um, because I was full of pride and, and I had Satan whispering in my ear all the time <laughs> that I thought I was just fine the way I am. And I thought that, um, that I knew it all and I thought, well, what, what information could I possibly get from a book that's 2,000 years old and there's all this new information and, oh, I was wicked. Uh, <laughs> but, um, but God saved me, so, so it's okay. So I'm super grateful for that. And I'm gonna go through um, just four steps to understanding the gospel. Again, I'm not, um, I, I'm not a, what's the word I'm looking for? So I don't have all of the answers. Um, this is how I understand the gospel. This is how it's been explained to me. And hopefully um, after watching this video and then watching the follow-up videos or um, 
websites that I'm going to direct you to in the description box. So definitely check those out. Um, you will have a, a better idea of what the gospel is because what most people share is not the gospel. And I think it's more like prosperity gospel or progressive Christian gospel, um, but it's not the true biblical gospel and what um, born again Christians are uh, commanded to share. We're sh we're, we are um, supposed to, as believers in Christ, if you really understand the truth that is in this book, if you really understand that Jesus is coming back and that he's coming back to judge and that there's two different places for people to go, you would be explaining this to people. If you're not out there telling people these things, then I question whether or not you really believe it. Um, or if, I don't know, maybe you have antisocial personality disorder, you don't have a conscience. I don't know. Um, but it's very suspicious for me. So if you are not um, you know, if, if you are not burning bright for Jesus, if you're not like, I need to tell everyone about what, what Jesus did for me and how he changed me, right? My shirt says I was one way and now I am completely different. Oh, sorry. <laughs> and the thing that happened in between was him. Yes. Jesus changed me. I didn't change myself. Believe me, I tried to be different for first like 35 years of my life and um I I failed miserably um I wouldn't say that I was particularly unhappy for whatever reason God had blessed me <laughs> throughout my life I just I feel like John the disciple who said like the, the one who Jesus loves like that's me this is how I feel like God was with me my whole life. It took me a, like God knew who I was and God followed me my whole life. It took me a long time to find him. Um, but I do want to preface by saying that I have been searching for God for as long as I can remember. For as, as, And while I got God wrong for so long, um, I was always searching for him. And I believe that he, I know that he knew that in my heart and I knew that I was searching for him. And so he gently just brought me through all of the trials that I needed to go through um, to get to where I, I am today. There's this beautiful song, I'll link it. It's called Every Mile, Every Mile Mattered. And I loved it. And that, that just kind of came into my playlist um, about a month ago. And it just made me ball because it just felt so true for me. Um, there's a lot of Christian artists that I just love. And, um, and what I said in my first video about really protecting what you allow into your life um, is applies to music too. Really ask yourself, you know, when you're watching a show, when you're listening to music, when you are listening to a podcast, who are these people? And more importantly, um, start asking people, who is Jesus Christ to you? Um, because if, if they deny his deity, if they deny, um, that Jesus Christ is their Lord and Savior, then you really need to take uh, the things they say with a grain of salt. So just a little warning to be careful about who you're listening to and what you're filling your mind with because, you know, there's, um, it's easy for us to just say things without even realizing it. And especially with blasphemy, which is something that, um, you, you'll learn about as you go through the ten, um, like the moral law, the ten commandments, um, that blasphemy is a very big sin, and it is taking um, the name of God and using it in an inappropriate way. And so, you know, one of the, you know, when we just say it so flippantly, like we'll say like OMG, and um, and we say it because we hear it. So if you're watching something, my very good friend, um, she's wonderful. And she, I know it was through her prayers and, and her family's prayers because uh, I met Lisa when I was in my early 20s. And I know that my salvation is, is because of her and her family. I know that. Um, <laughs> I get teary-eyed. Um, she never stopped praying for me. <sighs> Hold on. <laughs> Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> so thank you, Lisa, for your constant prayers and um, for your family for always thinking of me and um, 
petitioning for my salvation to God. I am eternally grateful. Thank you. Um, so let's talk about what the good news is, what the gospel really says, and what that means for you. Um, I'm going to explain it the way I understand it. I'm going to link to some videos um, so you can hear how other people understand it. And the goal is not to convert you. I know that I cannot change your mind. Um, however, what I'm hoping is that I can plant a seed, that I can provide you with some information that God will water and grow into something beautiful down the road. So continue to ask questions, continue to search, um, and don't feel discouraged if even after listening to this, you still don't really understand or maybe you don't feel anything. Um, give it time and just keep searching. Um, it took me 30, what was 2017? I was 36 years old um, when God saved me. I had been searching for God for as long as I can remember. I could just feel that I wasn't alone, even though, um, again, I, I said I kind of grew up in a secular atheistic home. I remember as a child um, asking about what happens, you know, when I die and being told like, nothing, you just die. <laughs> I was traumatized. I remember just being, and I don't remember how old I was exactly. I'll be honest, um, my childhood's pretty blurry. I don't remember a lot. Um, and so I just do remember crying myself to sleep though. Maybe I was somewhere between like five and eight, let's say it was tiny, just a little me. And, um, and I remember not being able to understand how I could cease to exist that because I, I remember even as a child having this understanding that as I closed my eyes and even though nothing of matter existed anymore, nothing around me was there with my eyes closed, that I was still there. And I even, I dreamed and I, I dreamed very um, vividly now and I dream every night and I remember my, my dreams and I've had that um, since I was a child. And, and that also um, really, it was probably God convicting me that like that's, that's a lie. Like there's, there's, and I just didn't believe it as a child. I just knew that for whatever reason, maybe I wouldn't be here, but I wouldn't go away. Cause how could I, how could I just not think anymore? And I just, <laughs> I thought about it. And I think if we really think about it, like lie down, close your eyes, and then just imagine yourself ceasing to exist. your conscience, your soul will convict you that that doesn't make any sense. We, yes, our bodies will die, but our soul is eternal. The question is, where is that soul going? <laughs> okay, so let's, let's start at step one. Step one of the good news is this. I want you to understand that you have been lied to. Yep, you have. This world is full of lies. So this one thing I have understood specifically since 2020, the year of vision, all this craziness going on in the world is that we live in upside down world now where everything that we as Christians, as biblical um, born again Christians, what God has told us, everything we know to be true is flipped upside down in this crazy, crazy world. <laughs> <laughs> All you have to like watch. Ugh. So I got rid of TV. Sorry, I keep Kenji. But I got rid of TV years ago. Um, how? When was it? Maybe 2021. So probably at least 10 years ago, probably longer that uh, I got rid of TV. At the time I got rid of it because I didn't want to waste my time, but I'm so grateful because really the brainwashing is real, my friends. Like the stuff that is in mainstream television is satanic. Um, I really would encourage you to pay attention to what it is you're letting into your mind because it does, even if you don't think it influences you, I'm telling you it does. My background is in mental health and addictions research. I have studied the human brain. I have studied what motivates human behavior. And I'm telling you that what you're watching on TV, what you're listening to, what you're seeing, the people you're hanging around with, they are influencing you. Whether it's conscious or not, 
They're influencing you. And you need to start being very, very careful about what you let into your mind and what you let, the people you let into your life. Because in, it says in the Bible, and I can't remember exactly where it is or what it is. I'll put it along the bottom maybe. <laughs> um, but that there will be a strong delusion, you know, sent over the, in the end times, that even the elect, if possible, would believe the lie. That's how good the lie is going to be. And that's how good the lie is right now. Okay, so you have been lied to, and here is where you've been lied to. I want to read this off because I wrote it out. And I want to make sure that um, I'm clear and, and I don't go on my many tangents. So, there is a creator in the heavens. He is alive and personable. God is not some distant, aloof energy force in the sky. God exists eternally in three persons, okay? These three persons are the heavenly father whose face is so holy that we cannot stand in the presence of his glory without perishing. The son, Jesus Christ, who is the image of the invisible Holy Father in heaven. He was given the title Emmanuel, which means God with us, and the Holy Spirit, a divine person. Again, not some aloof energy for spirit. The Holy Spirit is a person, and it is a he, a being with a mind, emotions, and will that dwells within the born-again Christian to guide our path towards righteousness and holy living that pleases God. Okay, so that's the very first thing to understand is that God exists, he's real, and um, I'm going to link in the description box um, two different videos on understanding the Trinity. It's something that is very contentious for a lot of people. It is a concept that the human mind cannot understand. That's the number one thing um, that I can say about that. It's, it's a difficult concept and it's because we're taking our three-dimensional understanding and um, yeah, I would say just understanding, like we have a three-dimensional understanding of the world, but God is not three-dimensional. Um, we don't even know like how many dimensions he is, but to suggest that God is not capable of manifesting himself as a human in order to teach us something is really limiting how powerful God is. So really ask yourself questions like, Am I trying to put God into a box that makes sense for me because my mind is limited? Or am I legit hearing something that's untruthful? In my experience, from everything that I've searched, and I have searched, <laughs> so I, I have looked into um, the Muslim religion, Hindu, Buddhism. So I went down the path specifically in my early 20s and I'll talk about my testimony and I will do another video on my testimony of how I came I came to Christ and just my um, just the process because it was a long process for me, right? Where I was trying to figure out what was right. You know, was it new age? Was it um, Wicca? Was it Buddhism? Was it Hinduism? Is it um, Islam? Is it and really Christianity was one of the last things I looked at which it makes a lot of sense, right? Because in Satan's world, everything is okay except the truth. Um, you can believe whatever you want in Satan's world as long as it's not Jesus Christ. And that's something that's going to become, mark my words, it's written in the, in the Bible. So you can go and you can look at the prophecies and also in Revelations. But Christians will be persecuted because they will be the group that is speaking the truth of the one true living God, and Satan wants to tear down as many people to hell as he possibly can. So if you're struggling with the Trinity, with the aspect of how can, how can God be three persons in one? Because a lot of people will say, and I've heard like, you know, um, that Christianity has three gods. That's not true. <laughs> it's just that the one true living God, the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, 
the God of the Jewish Bible, he is able to manifest himself in three different persons. To say that God can't do that, it, you're just putting him in a box and you are basically, again, God says, your thoughts are not my thoughts, your ways are not my ways. Um, and we have to remember that, that God is capable of all things. Of why can't he be? Uh, why can't he be the Holy Spirit that dwells in me and the man of Jesus Christ in heaven and the heavenly Father um, that spans uh, all space, time, the beginning, the end, the everything? Why can't he be all of those things? He can, and he is. And um, at some point, we have to be able to bow down to the fact that. God is only going to give us enough knowledge to get us where we need to go, which is salvation, eternal life with him, and the millennial kingdom, which is to come, which is when Jesus comes back and soon. I mean, we are in the end times here. And um, I'll do some videos uh, about why I think that in the future as well. Um, but I really do believe, and I think there's a lot of evidence to suggest that we are living in the end times and that I will see the coming of the Lord in my lifetime, which is so very exciting. <laughs> it's like waking up in the dream. A lot of people will say, you know, you're part of the world and you're going about your business, you got your job and you're like, what am I gonna go for vacation? You're doing all the things that everyone else is doing. And then boom, <laughs> God is just like, shares with you the truth and, um, and everything changes. Everything changes, your desires change, your wants change, your, everything about your life changes. I was one way and now I am completely different. This is so, so true for me. And I think, um, at least for every born again Christian that I know of, this is true for them too. So, um, I'm not sure. I think I veered off, but that's okay. So I think we're meant to move on to number two. Sorry. Yes, step two. So we understand that God is real. I have explained just a little bit about um, who God is in terms of the Trinity. Again, um, you can even hit pause and then go listen to those videos now if you want. That's cool. Um, so you can get a better idea of what um, what the, the Trinity means and just continue to ask questions, continue to open up the Bible. Um, there's some great tools, um, like different Bible tools where you, you know you can go on and you can type in things like, so it will not actually say the Holy Trinity in the Bible, um, but you'll, so you'll have to look for how Jesus Christ is viewed as God, how the Holy Spirit is viewed as God, and then also, and then the Heavenly Father is viewed as God as well. Okay, step two is, I'm going to read again, understand that God has laws and there are punishments for breaking his laws. According to the Bible, a lawbreaker of God's moral code is called a sinner. And a sinner's evil deeds, which include all words, behaviors, and thoughts that oppose God's laws, are known as sins. And the wages meaning the sentence for these sins is death. Yes, the reason you and I die according to God's word, word is because of sin. Um, okay, so I want to, I've got a few things I want to read here. There we go. Okay, sorry about that. So step two is to understand that you are a sinner, okay? Every single one of us is a sinner. This is a, uh, if you're not a born again Christian and maybe just like come across my channel because you're interested in it, um, this is going to be a hard pill for you to swallow that you're not a good person, <laughs> right? Because like, come on, we live in a world where everyone thinks they're a good person. I really recommend that you um, go to um on YouTube, and I don't like to recommend YouTube because of the things they've been doing now, but I also love YouTube and I just have hope that they will change their ways because <laughs> it's, it's such, um, I mean, I, w I would be lying if I didn't um, learn a lot and wasn't able to get a lot of resources because that's where I've been able to find a lot of biblical Christians is through YouTube. And so I'm not happy with the censorship and I'm not happy with the way that they've been acting. However, um, there are still 
a lot of great Christian artists so we can get access to their music. There is some really great uh, Christian YouTubers that are on YouTube. And so we will continue to use it until the Holy Spirit convicts me otherwise to stop. Okay. <laughs> I haven't got that. Um, I haven't got that from, from God yet. So I think it's okay right now. Um, but I would recommend that you go to YouTube and type in, um, living waters. And there's a man and I'm pretty sure he's from, uh, New Zealand and he is an evangelist and he's really, really good at it. And he's got this dog with sunglasses and it's just a really great way to see how he speaks to people and how he shares the message with people. Um, and he does a really good job of walking you through the moral law, at least usually the four or five of them to, so that you can see that I'm not lying. Um, according to the moral law, the 10 commandments of God, we've all sinned. And if you don't believe you've sinned, then you're just deluding yourself. And then you've broken the commandment of thou shalt not lie. And you're just lying to yourself and to other people. We are all sinners. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. We all um, do not uphold his righteousness, his holiness. And that is what we are expected to do if we want to get into heaven on our own accord. Okay. Um, so once we know that we have broken <laughs> God's law, uh, which we all have need to, <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm so grateful for salvation because I realize um, that I'd done so many terrible things. And let's move to step three, which is the, the promise of, um, oh, no, but I, I wanted to just, here we go. In, in, turn your, again, open up your, your Bibles. And I, I want you to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. And we're going to go to... Verse nine. Okay. Verse nine. Now, again, depending on what translation you're reading, uh, the words might be a little bit different. Um, well, don't confuse that with there's different Bibles. There's not different Bibles. There's different translations and each one has a different intention. So there's like word by word translation. And that's what the King James version is. The King James version takes the Greek words and literally translates it word for word with English. That's why it's viewed as like the, the, the best standard to listen to. But then, you know, there's, there's also uh, translations that are thought for thought. So we're not taking anything out of context. We're just using different ways of understanding it. And the King James Version is kind of like reading Shakespeare. And for some people, it really just falls on deaf ears. And the translations are meant so that people can hear the gospel in a way that they will understand. So don't get confused by that. And don't think that just because one book uses a different word, even though they have the same meaning, that that means uh, that the Bible's corrupted. It's not. Um, that's false. So 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Okay, so this is very important, right? The unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is heaven, if you don't know. That's heaven and the kingdom of God are the same thing. And heaven comes down to earth. Heaven, the kingdom of God, comes down to earth at the end of time, the second coming of Jesus. And then the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, is the thousand year millennial reign of Jesus Christ. That's what, we're, that's what we're moving towards, which is amazing. However, unrighteous people will not inherit this, okay? And who are the unrighteous? Let's look at this. Do not be deceived, hmm? because this world will deceive you into thinking that if you're one of these people, that you're good enough to get in. And I'm telling you, you're not, okay? So neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, no revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. Hmm? So all if, if you are 
in one of those sins, right? So let's just look at the first one, fornicator. So that's somebody who's having sexual behaviors outside of the sanctity of a man and a male and female marriage. Hmm? So if you're having sex and you're not married, you're fornicating. If you're having sex outside your marriage or into someone else's marriage, you're an adulterer, okay? So if you're doing any of those things, you are not inheriting the kingdom of God, okay? But here's, here's something I wanna to touch on. And like most people will be like, ah, that's not fair. I mean, <laughs> get over yourself. That's the rule. Like, I just, I don't know how else there are consequences to, to bad behavior. And whether or not you think it's bad behavior doesn't change the fact that it's bad behavior to God, okay? Um, and, and that's a fact. But the next thing I think is very important because uh, I like to watch people while they're doing street preaching and stuff like that because I think that it's great and I just don't have the courage to do it. So kudos to all of you who are standing on street corners and you guys are brave. I mean, absolutely brave. Um, but oftentimes um, when, when you are able to convict someone of their sin, so as you're going through the moral law and you're like, have you ever lied before? And they're like, well, everybody lies. <laughs> <laughs> which is everyone's favorite response. Everyone's done that. Um, I'm no different than everybody else. Again, it's projection, right? And they're just, they're just trying to deflect responsibility by saying, well, if everyone else is doing it, then how bad can it be? But God's telling us that it is. And what I really want to make clear is that um, those of us who are born again Christians are not unsinful, okay? So the only difference between a born again Christian and somebody pre coming to Christ is the fact that we've repented and you haven't of our sin. That's, that's the difference. Um, and then people will say things like, well, what kind of loving God would send people to hell um, because of a sin? And it, it's an interesting spin. And it's again, it's like the truth, but they spin it in a way that's negative. And um, here's the truth, if you want to know the answer to that. God doesn't send sinners to hell, okay? People go to hell because they refuse to repent. That's the difference. God has given us a way. God came here as a man 2,000 years ago and paid the price for you on the cross. He died and took your payment, your sentence. Because remember, in the second... In this second step, we learn that the wages of sin is death, okay? If you sin, and whether that's you telling a lie or, or I, you know, you're having sex before marriage, which is very common in this day and age because everything on TV is perverted and encouraging people to have just perverted, ungodly lifestyles. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, it's, I would say like probably most people, they're like, you're screwed, right? And all of a sudden you're like 25 and you learn that like, that's wrong, even though the world has been telling you it's right. And you're like, what am I supposed to do? You know? And of course you're going to say things like, well, I didn't know any better. And however, now you do in this moment, I'm telling you that it's wrong. Not not because of me, because that's what the book says, which is God's word, okay? So God's word says that there are certain people who will not inherit the kingdom. There are certain laws that must be followed. You broke them, so did I. Here's the difference. When I heard what God did for me, I accepted that grace. I recognized that I was wrong. I repented. I turned away from what the world says was right and I started to follow what God said was right. I put my trust that when he said in this book that if I deny myself, if I turn away from the sins of the world and I do what God wants me to do, if I let his will come through me, that I will get to live with him forever. I believe that and that is the gospel. The gospel says that anyone who repents and puts their full faith in Jesus will be saved. And that's amazing. Okay. So this second part, so we just learned all of the people who aren't inheriting the kingdom, right? And, 
and such were some of you, right? This is a letter. He's speaking to a group of, of uh, professing born-again Christians. But you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Okay, I'm going to read that one more time, and I just want you to just close your eyes and just listen to it, okay? Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you were washed but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of God. Please hear me. Hear me what I'm saying. If, if, if you're here because you're searching for truth, I am no better than you, and I'm not saying that I am. I mean, the fact that God saved me makes me want to do these videos because it means he can save anyone. Please. He's understand. I'm a sinner too. I just am a repentant sinner. I'm just somebody who recognized my sin and chose the route of salvation. I chose the narrow path and you can choose the narrow path too, or you cannot. I mean, that's your choice, right? But you can't, <laughs> you can't, um, choose to deny the way to salvation and then stomp your feet like a child and say that you still want the same result. That's, that's just not how the world works. And this is the problem with society. And when they started giving participation ribbons to everyone who showed up to a sporting event, is then we started teaching people that just because you exist, you get all these things. And now we have narcissists everywhere because everyone's entitled. Everyone thinks. And people are like, oh, everyone, everyone gets to go to heaven. I don't want to go to a place with rapists and murderers and evil people. Do you? Gosh, no, I'm happy that I, that I am a servant to a loving God, but also a just God. I mean, what kind of loving God would not provide some type of punishment for a person who has murdered someone or raped somebody or molested somebody or like beat somebody? Like there's evil things in the world and you think those people should get to go to heaven too? There's something wrong with you. Like, <laughs> sorry, but... That's not right. That's not, you got to check your heart. And if you think that, it, that um, these people should be allowed to get the same, um, just have the same fate as you. And it's, it's different than somebody who repents. It's different than someone who did those things, recognized their wrongness, turned their life around, and is now being a different person. That's the magic of God. God can change you in a heartbeat, no matter what evil you've done. However, if you're evil, if you've done evil, and if you refuse to admit that you're evil, or you justify your sin, or you keep acting like that evil person, you are not going to inherit the kingdom of God. Understand that you won't, and you don't deserve it. Okay. You don't deserve it. <sighs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Sometimes I get a little, oops, a little feisty. Um, but yeah, like, I mean, to, to be evil and think that evil gets to go where good goes, and uh, no, mm -mm. that's not, and, and as somebody who has been praying for, like, for somebody who spent their whole life just loving, like, fairy tales and beauty and magic and, like, you know, singing and dancing and being in nature and that's it, it and that's the joy of what what God has to promise for those of us who have hearts like that um it's not for the evil it's not for the evil um okay step three understand that you cannot earn your way into God's heavenly kingdom okay so You cannot earn your way. Oh. oh, this is it. Yes. So let me read this for you. 
So Isaiah 64 verse 6 says, All of us have become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous acts are like filthy rags. We all shrivel up like a leaf, and like the wind, our sins sweep us away. So to God, whatever we do that we think is righteous is like, is filthy rags. There's nothing that you can do to earn your way into heaven because the wages of sin is death. Okay. This has already been decided. There's a book called, um, I'll, I'll link it below. I think it's called the, the stranger, the stranger on the road to, I can't remember. Sorry. Um, it's a, it's a really good book though. And it, it explains the concept of sin really well. I would recommend people uh, read it. I'll put it in the description box um, so you can see. But uh, it, it's a really good book. But understand that we can't earn our way into heaven, right? So Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves... It is the gift of God, not of works, least any man should boast. So it is by grace through faith that we are saved. There are no works and there's most religions out there focus on works that you need to do certain things in order to get into heaven. And that's not at all what the Bible teaches us. What God's word tells us is that it is through his grace only through his loving kindness and grace that we are saved if we simply repent, turn away from the old way of being and trust alone in him, have faith. It is by grace through faith that we are saved. And the reason for that is what we find at the end. It is the gift of God, not works, least any man should boast. God knows our heart, <laughs> right? God knows our heart and he knows that if it was works based, then what would happen is we would get into heaven and we'd all be like, well, this is what I did. And this is why I'm so great. And this is why I got in here. And he would just have a whole bunch of Lucifers um, hanging out in heaven with him, which is not what he wants at all. We have to recognize that we need God that he is our source. He is the one that knows what's best for us. Our thoughts just lead us to destruction. And if you haven't realized that yet, it'll come. <laughs> Trust me, it'll come. Um, it's, it's not the um, greatest realization in the sense that it certainly humbles you, but it is good in that it, it will get you um, further along the path and in, in a good place. So salvation from your impending doom, which is eternal separation from God in a place called hell requires two things, repentance and faith in Jesus Christ. Okay. Those hell was created not for you. Actually, it was created for Satan. That's why hell was created. Um, and those people, who refuse to repent, who refuse to accept the gift of God, his grace will go there with him because you've chosen to remain separate from God. Sin separates us from God. If we go back to Genesis, we see that Adam and Eve walked with God. They, they had never sinned and so they could be in his presence. And then we learn later on that now humans, if we were to be in uh, Father God's presence, uh, we would just burn up and perish. Like he just, oh, he just, my eyes, like he's just so bright and holy and incredible. Um, but it wasn't always like that. It's our sin that separates us from God. And so if you remain in your sin, you will remain separate from God. I hope that makes sense. Um, you must repent and you must put your faith in God. You must return to God and, and rely on him, his spirit and his will to direct you in life. If you want to be in his kingdom, there's no other way. 
Anyone who tells you that there's another way is a liar, okay? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to the Father except through me. Those are very direct words. I don't know how people get confused by that. Um, but yes, making sure... There's one other thing I wanted to say. This. So... Anyone who tells you you can enter God's kingdom in any other way is a liar, and we know who the liar is. How do we know who the liar is? Well, um, we're told. We're told who the liar is. So 1 John chapter 2, verse 22 says, Who is the liar? It is whoever denies that Jesus is the Christ. Such a person is the Antichrist, denying the Father and the Son. No one who denies the Son has the Father. Whoever acknowledges the Son has the Father also. Okay, so we're told here explicitly that anyone who is denying the deity of Christ or that Jesus Christ um, is the way, the truth, and the life is the Antichrist and is the liar. So knowing that, just really pay attention to, again, the people that you're letting into your life because um, there are a lot of liars out there, unfortunately. And finally, um, I just want to go over the, what I've got, my fourth step, which is, so what do we have? <laughs> I'm just going to do a little bit of an overview. So step one is just understanding that you've been lied to, that God is real, that he exists, that he's holy, that he has rules. <laughs> Number two is to understand um, that you broke those rules, that you are a sinner and that the wages of sin is death. Number three is to understand that you cannot earn your way into heaven because you're a sinner and you're on the path to death. You've been given the death sentence. However, um, God provided a way and it's his way through his grace and that if we're able to recognize um, that our ways are wrong and that God's ways are right if we turn away from the world and start doing what God wants us to do that's what repentance is and that we put our full faith into the Word of God that we know that what he said to us is true and that we will be given eternal life then we're saved and to finish, um, once after that happens, that's not it. Um, and then the final thing is to make sure that you're not a hypocrite and that you start living the Christian life. Now, um, if you haven't watched my second video, um, then you can watch that now. And it is uh, instructions for Christian living because we do need to be doing things, uh, not because that's how you get into heaven, but as born again Christians, we are expected to act a certain way. So to be saved is to repent and to put your faith in God. And that is where salvation comes from. It's not to say that you're not expected to, to do good things for the sake of the kingdom, for the sake of helping your father, um, fellow brethren, for the sake of um, making the Holy Spirit happy. So. Good works are still important. It's just not, you just don't need good works to be saved. I hope that makes sense. Um, but it's important that we start to live the Christian life um, and that isn't easy, but that's really where that sentence of deny thyself, pick up, excuse me, deny thyself, pick up my cross and follow me, is that we are um, called to push aside our wants and our will if they conflict with the will of God so that we can do his work so that we can build up the kingdom of heaven and this is um, the main one of the main reasons why I'm doing this <laughs> this video um, as I said I'm a baby Christian I don't uh, you know I, I often ask myself like who am I to be sharing this stuff um, but I I just feel like I, I can hopefully help at least someone, um, maybe just somebody who's going through what I'm going through. And maybe if nothing else, just, just to give, um, you hope that you're not alone. And, um, I, um, in the past would get very nervous about doing things like this. And 
it's it's incredible to see how doing God's will that his promise is true that he really does strengthen us and that he really does make it possible for us to do what seems like the impossible um, and, it, and it's amazing so I just wanted to say um, oh right this is and here's I want to read something because there are a lot of people who why I will say born again Christians and biblical Christians because those are true followers of Christ okay um, but there's a lot of fake Christians all right there's a lot of people and it confused me for a long time that's why it's important that you change for because my experience you know I would meet people who would claim to be Christians and they're like you know because I I, <laughs> I have a past <laughs> Right, and I said I'm a, I'm a sinner. I'm a, a past sinner, just like you. And I I still make mistakes today. I will always be a sinner. Thank you, God, for your grace. Oh my goodness. Um, but yeah, like I would meet people in my early twenties, and we'd be partying with me, and you know we'd be rocking it out, and just doing all sorts of ungodly things. And um, and they told me they were Christian, and so that was confusing and there was no um there was no salvation in that person and i can think back now and that person was not saved absolutely it doesn't, doesn't make any sense and here's why i'm going to read you um if you go to matthew chapter 7 verse 15 to 20 um i think this one's really great and it's god's way of showing us that like we have to get away from just paying attention to what people are saying and we have to really watch what people are doing their behaviors because um as i'll bring up probably often you know with people who have narcissistic personality disorder or any of the cluster b ones um they're really good at running their mouth and they're really good at sounding genuine they're they're very charismatic they know all the right things to say um but they're liars and you know that they're a liar because what God calls fruits, what they put out into the world, how their behavior um, reflects on other people and on the world is not good, it's negative. And so you can see that how that person is acting and behaving is not the same as what they're saying, right? It's like the person who keeps telling you they're so sorry for cheating on you and they just keep sleeping around. Something's off there. <laughs> Okay, don't trust, don't just trust people um, based on what they say. Really pay attention to what they're doing. And, and this is not just from me, this is from God. Matthew um, chapter 7, verse 15. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inward they are ravenous wolves. Warnings for us. You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Mm -mm, no. Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits, you will know them. Okay? So God is really telling us to pay attention to how people are behaving, okay? So if somebody, oh here, this is what I want to do. Someone who remains in sin without feeling shame or guilt should be viewed as a red flag. Do not take counsel from someone who is who justifies lying, calls stealing borrowing, <laughs> or dismisses their fornication or sexual perversion as okay in the eyes of the Lord because they prayed about it. These are things that I've heard. I've heard people say these things. Oh, I've been praying about it. God says it's fine, even though in his word it says it's not. And um, this is an important point. Um, prayer is your opportunity to speak to God. The Bible is God's opportunity to speak to you. If you are in prayer and you're hearing voices, um, it could be evil demons and spirits please understand that it's not just god here evil is real demons are real and they're spirits god tells us that satan is the prince of the air right he's like the god of the air he's the prince of the earth he is working and you better believe that he's trying to pull you away from god that is his 
He is so jealous of God. Wow. He just want, and anyone who is worshiping him, he is so jealous and evil. <laughs> so please understand that. Understand that. These people are hypocrites and they're listening to the devil and not the Holy Spirit. It's true. Any voice that is telling you or justifying your sin is not of God. It is not the Holy Spirit. If you have a person or you have a voice or as you're praying, you're feeling convicted and it's telling you that your lies are fine or your stealing is fine or your fornication is fine or whatever sin you're doing is fine, you are listening to the devil. Okay, so please understand that. Um, I think that's it for today. Um, as I said, go into the description box. I hope that you find the extra stuff that I put in there helpful. And um, yeah, blessings to you all. I'll be back again. See you soon.